Okay, we are now joined by our 2021 NASCAR Camping World Truck Series champion, and that is Ben Rhodes. Uh, congratulations, Ben, on this phenomenal night and this phenomenal season. We'll get right into questions for Ben, so if you have one, please raise your hand, and we'll get you a mic, and we'll start right over here. Uh, David Swope, ESPN Radio, Albuquerque. Uh, we talked yesterday um, at the media uh, event. You seemed awfully zen then. Um, is that what kind of you're, you're using to kind of get yourself to where you were? Uh, it seemed real patient out there. Had 10 laps to go, all of a sudden, you had all of this uh, uh, ability to just drive up, and uh, I thought a few more laps, you might drive all the way to the front. Uh, talk a little bit about that evolution. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more zen now, thanks to my good friend, Bud. <laughs> um, let me say something here. <sighs> Libations are good. Championship's awesome. And <sighs> this is going to be the weirdest press conference ever. <laughs> you know what? Here's what I got to say. What was the question? So, okay, wait a minute. I know what the question was. It was how did I get to – okay, so here's how this happened. My crew chief gave me this uh, adjustment with some colder uh, – with some lower air pressures because I said, hey, this isn't going to happen. I can't win the race the way this is. They're beating me on the restarts. He pumped me up, didn't work out the second stage, took me back down. So I watched Zane Smith and all these people drive away from me. I'm freaking out on the inside because we had radio issues and I couldn't talk to them. So I'm like really angry. I was pissed, pissed. And let me say something. Right, I got the mic so I can say it anyways. So <laughs> I was pissed. And here's how this went down. I said, Zane Smith, this is checkers or wreckers. I'm going to blow the motor trying to catch you. <clears throat> boom, boom, boom. And... I made it up to him because he had some lap traffic and then everybody, I thought I was, I thought I didn't have any tire left because I was um, sideways after every corner. And then, wow, the mic got out loud real fast. I was sideways after every corner. And you know what? I had some tire left. Those other people started slowing down. I said, wow, this is crazy. So uh, I passed him. Sheldon Creed tried to get all, you know, funky with me. And I said, ain't happening, Mamma Jamma. Bye-bye. <laughs> Went around the outside in the resin. And I said, goodbye. And then I was thought I thought I could maybe catch the 52 if we had more laps, but I wasn't worried about it. But third place is cool with me because I had the championship. And uh, wow, I talked really fast there. And I said, you know what? Championship's cool. <laughs> Hope I answered that question. I, I'm pretty zen. Thanks, my good friend Bud. Thoughts and prayers to our transcriptionist. For this yes. one. We'll go to Bob. My wife Thanks. looks really embarrassed. Are you embarrassed? We're champions. Yeah. Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Like we've been in here for the last hour talking. I'm, I'm, I'm talking, so glad you didn't pick me. Yeah, talking to people about your patience, and it sounds like you weren't patient. I was patient, Bob. All right. Wait, like, don't, don't but, keep going. Were you, you, you've been talking about taking risks and, and everything over those last 40 laps, but were you were they controlled risk? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so here's the deal. I could feel the weight transfer, and I knew what we had going on for rear springs and everything we were doing for the front springs. So I said, okay, here's how I'm going to have to drive it. <clears throat> I was trying to keep bouncing under control, trying to, you know, basically keep my everything loaded up that I wanted loaded up. And, you know, I was I was driving – to the saturation point, that's engineer speak now. I didn't know that from, I'm from Kentucky. Not everybody has teeth. Wait a minute. <laughs> that's not a good representation of Kentucky. Everybody has teeth in Kentucky. We drink fluoride in our water. Anyways, <clears throat> here's the deal. I knew that I had to keep certain elements of the truck loaded up and I had to do some uh, quick thinking. Yes, patience. That was what she was asking. So patience. Yeah, I had patience tonight. There were certain times that the non-playoff drivers were pretty much going to wreck me, and I had to back out. Sheldon was trying to take a spot for the second stage win, and I backed out going to turn three. It was like, what? It, what he was third. It was third for third points, which doesn't matter. So I let him have that spot. It was, we were racing for second. And then the 18 on a restart, I think at the eight, end of stage one, was pretty aggressive. I was like, all right, you can have that. Ooh. The bud is amazing tonight. So here's what I'll say. 
I had patience. And I also got really aggressive when I had to. You know, it's a good night. It's a good night. We got a question in the back. We'll stay up front to Jeff, and then we'll go to the back. I went to this place called The Barn tonight. They gave me like a ring and stuff, but I couldn't keep it. And I asked the bartender, I said, can you make me an old-fashioned? I'm from Kentucky. I like bourbon. She didn't know how to make an old-fashioned. It's unfortunate. Okay, question in the back. Hey, can I do one first? Oh, yeah. Hey, Jeff uh, Gluck, how's it going? Okay, good, good, good. Um, do I need water? No, I like to put the bud. The bud is good. <laughs> okay, I'll drink water. I was cramping earlier. So, like, you know, six years ago when you came down to North Carolina, um, you know, with the, the JRM stuff, and it was like Ben Rhodes, Hot Prospect, you know, and I think by now you thought you would be in the Cup Series and all this stuff. And this necessarily isn't necessarily how you thought your career was going to go, but here you are. You're, you're still only 24 years old, Cup Series champion. It, from everybody, like Bob said, we talked to, you're, you've grown on the track, you've matured. Um, what, how do you view your career now at, at this point? There's a lot of bubbles in this. Um, so Dasani Water, Jeff Gluck, has bubbles in it. But here's what I'll say, but, but, um, Jeffrey. I, okay, when you're the young guy trying to come through the sport, you imagine yourself being that cup champion at age 18, right? So you kind of set, like, these unrealistic goals. But I'm so happy with where I'm at. I've got so – look, Duke and Ronda Thorson, I wouldn't even be racing right now if it wasn't for them. They're amazing. I owe everything really to them from anything that I have going on in the sport today. So they gave me my big break. They gave me my opportunities. I'm here today because of them. So I'm not going to – I'm not going anywhere unless they tell me, you know, they don't want to race anymore. Unless, the, unless If Thor Sport doesn't want to race or they don't have space for me, whatever, I'm racing for Thor Sport. I love the team and love the environment. They've been awesome. And – the way, here's what I'm going to say. I think I've said that before, but here's what I'm going to say. Thor Sport is super, super, super stable team. Um, they've had Menards forever. Duke's amazing. He's given me so much advice. We uh, started a paving company on the side because Duke and Rhonda, you know, obviously they have Seal Master, and I've been seal coating and stuff just like Matt Crafton has. And I've got so much mentorship where I'm at. I love it. Um, you know, I couldn't ask for better people around me. So, uh, it's like a family. It's one big family in Ohio. It's just a five-hour drive for me up the road, and uh, I, I stay up in Kentucky. I'm kind of the outsider. Thor Sports the outsider, so we're like a match made in heaven, and I'm loving it. <laughs> Mick loving it. Daniel, you have a question? Okay, uh, Daniel McFadden, front stretch. First off, how many have you had? I'm a lightweight. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely lightweight. I had a lot. I had a decent amount of champagne in the champagne shower because I love champagne. That's the taste of victory. So, circling back, I had like I don't know four real fast at the barn. I'm a lightweight. You can make fun of me. It's okay. I take it. All right. Uh, so could you say what, what was it like for you to do uh the dual burnouts? With Chandler Smith on the front stretch. What was I didn't like? actually notice him because I was so encompassed in my own burnout. And here's the crazy part is that uh, Brad Moran was talking to me. He's like, hey, man, you need to bring it back for the stage now. It's going to come out there and um, bring it on back. And I was like, okay. And then I started another burnout. And I was like, that's unexpected. Way to go, Ben. Do another burnout. And then he's like, oh, yeah, you really need to come back now for the stage coming out. So I stopped for a second. I think I was at the start finish line. I was like, this might look stupid, but I'm going to do another burnout. <laughs> so I started another burnout. And then the next thing I know, I didn't have tires. So I just stopped on the front stretch because I didn't have any tires left. And I was like, hey, Brad Moran, um, you, you, you don't have me in turn uh, one and two anymore. I'm, I'm stuck right where I'm at. So that's kind of why the stage took place where it did because I didn't listen to directions very well. <laughs> we'll go upstairs to uh, the press box for a question. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires. Uh, when we talked to you yesterday, you said that you couldn't wait to get in the truck, and that you were done with all the festivities. It seems like now you have had a lot of festivities. Mm -hmm. um, what's the next step for you going forward? And uh, please stay out of the truck. More festivities. We got a lot more festivities tonight, Jerry Jordan. Let me tell you, I'm staying at the Hampton Inn downtown. It's a free party. Everybody can come show up. Um, <coughs> I got a lot of festivities on tap. Uh, karaoke, I feel like singing some Ice Ice Baby. It's kind of like my go-to. Um, 
along with some other songs. So we'll probably find some karaoke somewhere. If not, we might just like take the TV in the lobby, throw something up on it, and start singing. That's cool with me. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of festivities, Jerry Jordan. Uh, apparently, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna go to the Nashville Cup Series banquet, so that's really cool. Uh, there's gonna be like some rings and like some trophies and stuff involved. Uh, I'm gonna go up to Sandusky probably like Monday, or Tuesday. I'm gonna go eat some pizza and drink some margaritas. That's a good combo. Did I answer your question, Jerry Jordan? <laughs> we'll stay up in the press box. ChrisKnightCatchFans.com. Um, hey, Ben, I was just wondering if you could talk about the bump and run. Lynn told me I had to drink water. Uh, yeah, the bump and run was awesome for me. You know, I'm sure other people don't see it that way, but here's the thing. I came up to lap traffic the first time. I got close. Everybody was starting to kind of fall back to me, but not quite yet. It wasn't to like that 10 to go mark when people started falling back to me. So I got close and I was like, man. I started kicking myself, really mad at myself, because I was like, man, if I'm going to make a pass, I've got to use these lap cars as the advantage, because there's a huge amount on the line, the championship's on the line, and if I don't, you know, capitalize on the next lap cars session that comes to us, then, you know, I'm I'm SOL. So I said, I don't want to be SOL. The next lap car session that came to me, I was like, all right, this is it. Let's be real gentle here. Let's be real gentle. Nice and easy. I gave him a little bump and one or two. And he kind of went, whoop, whoop. And I went, whoop, whoop, back to the left side. And uh, he raced me down the front stretch, but I got clear. And then when I went down into turn three, I drove it in super deep until basically I imagined my crew chief yelling at me to stop driving in so deep. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. And then he's gone. And I was going to deal with Sheldon Creed after that. It was awesome. We have, uh, we'll go back to Daniel and then up front here. Uh, okay, then you mentioned you might be doing karaoke. What is your go-to karaoke song? I Well, Ice Ice Baby for sure. I sung that at my wedding, but I don't remember it. And here's what I'll say. I think I've said this before, but here's what I'll say. I got a list of songs on my phone for just this thing. It's it's inebriated song list is how it's titled. And I got about like 30 to choose from because I can't remember them when I'm in the moment. So I gotta go back to my list, and I just gotta say, "Ooh, I like break up in a small town. I like, I like um, ice ice baby. What's some other ones? Oh, welcome to welcome to the jungle. I like welcome to the jungle really well. That's a good one. I sung that in a Dominican once, and a um, had like a cheeseburger, and like an old fashioned. It was awesome. Come up here, Luis Torres, the podium finish. Speaking of welcome to the jungle, you were able to survive. You mentioned yesterday that consistency sometimes is going to win you the championship. You talked about how Kraft was able to do it a couple years ago. When you look back at this season, do you how proud are you to just prove the point that consistency got it done after just only winning the two Daytona races early this season? Well, I learned it from Matt. And then he came up to me after the race and was like, hey, you finally learned. I was like, yeah, I did. Thanks for teaching. And um, – yeah, I walked up to Duke right after that, and I was like, hey, Duke, so now that we got the owner's championship, I believe we're like, it's like, we done racing now? Um, because, you know, I know you wanted that, and that was like the one thing that keeps us racing. He's like, yeah, we're done. Uh, now he's joking. Uh, so we're going to be back next year racing for the next Drivers and Owners Championship, I do I do hope. Um, and <sighs> my crew chief did a shoey tonight. It was awesome. It was my shoe, and he and his shoey. It's cool. We have some more questions over here. We do. We got Zach and then Alex and then Joe. Zach Sterniel with Front Stretch. Uh, obviously, you're soaking this moment in. Did you ever allow yourself to think of what this moment would be like? And is this what you had in mind? Yeah, the champagne's getting warm for sure. Um, no, I, d I did think. But so here's the thing once Martinsville ended, I was mad because I finished seventh at Martinsville. And I was like, you know, I didn't even race. Like I didn't even drive hard. I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't even bump anybody. I got pushed into. Other, I got pushed around. So on the media day, I was like, you know what? I need to make sure that if any of these other drivers watch my interview, they know that I'm not gonna like move out of the way for them anymore. Uh, I'm not just you know a little gentle Ben. Uh, so <coughs> I believe your question was. 
Oh, yeah, is this moment living up to the dreams? Yeah, so here's the thing. I, I was dreaming about this all week. I didn't sleep a lot until I got to Phoenix, and then I woke up yesterday before the media day because I woke up at, like, 3 in the morning. And, of course, if, you know, 2 o'clock rolled around, I was kind of late and at home at least, and I was like, ah, I never take naps. I've probably taken about this many naps in my life, this many. Yesterday was the first one. I woke up at the hotel about 10 minutes before the media day. I was like, wow, I'm really relaxed. That was a good hour-long nap. And then um, we did questions and stuff. Step here to Justin and then go to Alex. Kicking the tires. Um, ben, first off, congratulations. We <laughs> talked you. We talked yesterday about you flying under the radar all season. You know, you won the first races and then we're kind of there all year long. And you kind of said that you would use that to your advantage for this race. When we talked to Matt Crafton also yesterday, he said that the biggest problem with rookies coming into the sport is that they don't listen. But then when we talked to him tonight, he mentioned that you were the champion because you did listen. So do you feel like all of that kind of just came together for you with having someone like Matt Crafton as, as, a, as a guide for you? Yeah, Matt's smart. Um, there was a first half to your question. Matt is smart. I like Matt Crafton. He's a good teammate. Um, Flying under the radar. Okay, yeah, so I'm not as popular as some drivers because I don't, I'm not, I'm so bad at the social media. I get on there and I was like, how do you be creative? And, and then I get sucked into the Twitter or the, the Instagram and the stuff and you're looking at other people's creativeness and it's like, wow, y'all are so creative. And then I just don't, I don't create anything because I'm just consuming. I'm just a consumer. So then I'm like, uh, oh, gosh, I probably should post because I haven't posted my Facebook in a while. But I'm really proud of the Louisville. Cr I got a good Louisville crowd behind me. I love my hometown. And I uh, got a good Louisville crowd. I'm a South End guy, Dixie Highway. It's kind of like the, you know, like we're the woo blue collar area. And, um, yeah, good, good peoples there. So, yeah, I do fly under the radar probably on the national scene, um, mainly because I tell – What's your name again? Bob. Bob. Mainly because I told Bob not to pick me on the race weekends because when he picks me, I run bad. So that's probably some of it maybe, but probably not really any of it. Um, so, yeah, I do fly under the radar, but that's okay. Hey, got championship wings now. And we will wrap it up with Alex right here in the center. <laughs> Whoa, hey, crew chief. How's it going? I had, like, a lot of Bud Lights without you. You should have been there. Alexander with the Charlotte Observer. So we've heard a lot about this shoey. So I'm curious. Oh. Yeah. What uh, was the story behind it? Are you an F1 fan? Did it live up to expectations? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to talk about it because it's nasty. <laughs> but guess what? We gonna talk about it. So <laughs> I am an F1 fan. I think it's a very entertaining form of motorsport. I love all motorsports. And here's the deal. We were at the shop before Martinsville. And we were making stupid bets, and I said, okay, if we win, and I didn't even have to bet anything in return, so it was a one-sided bet, and it was awesome. Thank you. So I said, if we win, you got to do a shoey with my sweaty race shoe. And he didn't want to do it. You denied it three times. <laughs> you denied it. And then finally, I took the shoe off and dumped a bunch of champagne in it until it was like full to the high top. It's like, mm, all yours. And you, you did a waterfall, which I don't think helped anything. Okay. It was well worth it, wasn't it? Yeah. I love that guy. I love you. Yeah, thanks. Oh, it grossed me out, so I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Ben. Uh, outstanding job tonight and all season long. And thank you for the entertainment. This post race press conference this as well. Is the best conference ever. <laughs> That's right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Made a lot of new friends tonight. I consider you my close group now. Drop my towel. <laughs>